Hey, hey, welcome to episode number 49 of the Brave Widow Show. Today, I get to talk with Jesse Gonzalez. Jesse is a young widow and a mother of three young children who felt like no one was there for her when she lost her spouse. She planned the funeral all by herself. She continued to raise her children all by herself, and she really felt very lonely. During a time when most people feel that they're angry with God or they become distanced from God, Jesse views his experience of losing her spouse as a wake-up call and a way that God used her to pull her closer to him. I hope you enjoy this podcast episode as much as I did. Jesse gives back to other widows. She's written a book. She's given advice. She's physically gone out and served other widows and given other people what she wished she would have had during that experience. Let's dive in. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Brave Widow Show. Today, I have with me a special guest. Her name is Jesse Gonzalez, and I'm so excited for you to hear what she has to share today. Jesse, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and being willing to share your story. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely. Well, I feel like it's an honor because you have a book that's published and I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm going to let you tell your story, but I think that's a pretty amazing accomplishment and you've, you've got some really good insights. So if you don't mind, if you would just share a little bit of your background with the audience and then we can jump into your story, I think that would be amazing. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Okay, so it just started on uh, February 8th of 2022. That's my husband, he passed away. And I have three children with him. I have a beautiful daughter. Her name's Ava. And I have two sons, which is Roman and Kellen. And they're beautiful. And thank God for them. And I, I went through the grieving process. I'm still going through it as well. It's just, it's so, there's so much pain in a grief, but you know, I felt so alone and I just closed off myself to the whole entire world. I didn't even answering phone calls to anybody because I had them, nobody checking in on me during when I needed it the most. Nobody was seeing if I was okay and everything like that. So one day I just, I heard like God's voice speak to me. And told me to write a story about this, to reach out to fellow widows out there going through the situation that I'm going through. And just to give some encouragement to them as well. The book's called Uh, From Wife to Widow. And it, it just came out like two months ago. So it's just, you want, I just want to be able to let them know they are not alone. I learned that even though I had nobody checking in on me, God was there through me throughout it all and inspired me to write the book. And just, I give God the glory, of course, not myself. And I just, I'm grateful to be able to, even though I went going through that hard time that I had the strength through Christ to get me through and be able to write this amazing book to be able to share with fellow grievers and not just grievers, not just widows, but those as well that are helping those that are going through grief as well. It's like stuff not to say and the hurtful things, just a guide on how to help those out there that are going through grief. If they're a family member or friend, like words of encouragement and, and stuff like that as well. Some scriptures as well. So I'm super excited. And I just hope just to be able to inspire others out there. I love I love it. And especially it hasn't been that long since you lost your husband. And for those of you that are just listening, you're not seeing the video. I'm not going to ask Jesse how old she is, but she's young. She's a young widow. And I'm curious how old your children are, because I'm trying to wrap my mind around the fact that you felt like you lost a lot of the support that you have seen others have, or maybe you wish you have. So how old were your kiddos at the time, if you don't mind? Yes. So my kiddos were, my oldest was 10 years old. And then I had an eight-year-old son at the time and a three-year-old son. So very young, 
very and young. They, they go through the grief as well, and it hurts for me, and I hurt for them. Cause it's as a as a mother, like I, it's hard for me to. I try to be strong for them as of being their mother but there are times where memories will come in and or days and i'll just start crying and i just can't help but, but cry but but i feel like they're a blessing from the lord as god uses them to bring me back to joy and peace and happiness and patience and all the good stuff when i look at their face and and they and they ask me are you okay mommy those 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 words right there they just it just melts my heart and i praise god for them and that they're here for me and they care about me as much as i care about them so and when they go through it like my middle child he's the one that was like the closest to his dad and they were like buddies and he cries and i just tell him i was like i i know how I know it's a hard situation. Your dad loves you and I know he's shining down upon you and he's he's proud of you. You know what I mean? And I, I give him a hug and then we'll listen to some of my husband's uh, favorite music that he would listen to. And we just keep his memory alive because no matter now or even in the future, well, he, he'll always be in our hearts and we'll always keep his memory alive. Nothing will ever change, even in moving forward, if God does place a man in my life. So, yeah. So what, what would you tell, like, if we think about the young mother out there that just lost her spouse and three kids, I have four kids and three kids is a lot, especially when you feel like you want to just be able to grieve openly and you're trying to balance that with being strong for them and not being too distraught with them what what words of encouragement or what advice would you give to someone who's kind of early on in that situation and they're just feeling overwhelmed with the kids and allowing space for their own grief and trying to juggle it all what would you tell them I would first and foremost I would tell them to turn to God and go to God and cast all your fears and worries upon the Lord. It's in scripture. I would just tell them, just pray and ask God to give you that peace and just um, be there for you because God, God cares about the grievers. And and for somebody that may not know who God is, if I was to tell somebody in that um, point of view, I would tell them, just know that you're not you're not alone and there is those that care about you. I know there's a lot of people that don't know how to help those, but if we are able to help one another and know how to get to share these videos and, and get to t teach others the right things to say, then those out there can be there for fellow grievers, fellow widows. And that's why I'm very blessed to be able to be on this podcast with you because I love how you're you tell those out there the right thing words to say and how to help fellow grievers widows and just encouraging um, words and it's just amazing and and I just I just pray that the Lord uses this to just reach out to every single widow there is out there everywhere and just just know I know it's painful the pain nobody will ever understand what you're actually going through and how hurtful it really is because i go through that still to this day still over a year later still like nobody really knows how much i'm hurting inside but that's why i just i just try to just keep the joy of the lord and just read pray and just help others if if you don't know who God is, another one thing I would say is just go out and help people. Go be a servant to other people out there. Help somebody bring groceries in, or any any anything that brings joy to you. Maybe even if it's giving a stranger some money, whatever it is to bring joy to your heart, it helps. It really helps when you help others. It helps yourself. So that's what I would say. I oh my goodness, you made so many good points in there. One thing that gave me chills for a second was you, you leaned into the phrase, you are not alone. And for me, that is the phrase when I was driving home from the hospital and they told me that my spouse was dead, that 
it was just a phrase from God that just kept playing over and over on my mind. Like you are not alone. You are not alone. And a lot of times I get asked. And so I'll ask you, how did you keep from being angry at God or keep from questioning? Well, why did you let this happen? And maybe there was a period of time that you were, but how do you recover from that? Because I know some people that just really struggle with it. And it's a question that I get asked sometimes. What would you tell them? How can you still believe in God when he let this happen to you? For me, I know what I would say is God has the world in his hands. We're all in his hands. We all belong to to God as our creator. So for me, when my husband died, I didn't go through blaming God. I went through being open-minded and seeing maybe there there's something that I need to learn through this, that God has a plan through this situation. So, and I have been open to seeing what that plan was. It was to wake me up. I used to be uh, blinded and I was backsliding away from God. I was living the wrong life. I, I was, um, I was an alcoholic and I was so far away from God and I would used to be streaming on dating sites and, and then my children at that point, my daughter, she thought that I didn't care about her because I was busy living my life thinking I was so cool doing things of this world. And, and that really like made me think like, okay, so God used this situation to wake me up and saying, look, my kids need me. They need me to, to step up and be the mother that God created me to be. And I, I am just like, I was like, wow, I wasted my time being on electronic device instead of spending precious time with my children. I learned through this situation that life is short. Um, you know, so don't, don't take it a day for granted. You know what I mean? Live today as if it's your last. So what that meant for me is to spend time with my children and be there for my children and make time for them and help them in whenever they are and support them and be there for them. And, and as long as bringing them to church and just bringing them into good situations, being around better people and being around encouragement. And it's just, it's a whole lot of good that I'm glad that this situation taught me because beforehand I was just wasting away their life. They're only young for a little bit period of time. They're, they're already growing up. My daughter's already, she just started middle school this year. So I, that's not, you know, all this time I wasted away and now I'm, I'm enjoying them growing, especially my youngest. Now he's four. So now I'm taking every minute that he has for, for, I take, I take advantage of that. So I'm blessed. I'm so thankful that I have them and I'm thankful that my eyes been open and just, just think I would say to anybody going through this, like there, there's always a reason. There's a reason why God has his plan for our life. You're still breathing. God has a purpose. So my purpose is to be a better mother and to do better with my life. And I've been, I'm even, I've even started going to college as well. So I have plans to be able to open up women's home that I can help a fellow, fellow mother and children struggling. I just going to school and taking advantage and doing what I got to do to, instead of being where I was being content, being at the bottom, I plan on rising up so I can help others. Mm. So I, I love that. And you made such a good point about doing for others, almost essentially what you wish someone would do, have done for you or would do for you. And that was something I learned in the leadership and business realm a long time ago, but it definitely applies to being a widow because it's like, if you want someone to ask how you're doing or to send you a birthday card or to say, Hey, let me take the kids for an evening. Doing that for someone else can be a very rewarding and fulfilling experience. And as, as you mentioned, finding a purpose and finding a way to give back can be a very 
strong aspect of healing and a good sign that you're moving at least forward in your journey and trying to make an impact on, on others. I mean, what, what a big and beautiful heart that you have. I just, I love that. I praise God for it, to be honest. (laughs) So what would you tell, I guess I should ask, as your children were grieving, I'm sure some of them, the oldest one probably knew or maybe had the most memories. The middle one was closest to him, but did you notice they all kind of reacted differently or did they grieve similarly or how how did you see some of the differences in your kids? Oh, yes. They all grieve differently. My oldest, she she's more strong hearted so she didn't really cry per se but she she missed her dad by her listening to his music and now she's in in a band learning how to play an instrument like her dad played the guitar so she's learning his interest so instead of crying she's more so listening to all what he, music he listened to and just doing the instrument like learning how to be musical and artists like her dad is and she draws like my husband was a great artist and she's draws just like him so that's how I noticed with her she's stronger like as it appears on the outside but you know those people that don't cry are you could tell on the inside they they're hurting more they're just showing that they're strong on the outside so I told her I was like you're I'm proud of you I know and I know that it hurts and I know you miss your dad but you're doing an amazing job and I'm proud of you keep it up and then my middle son he he cries like every so often he'll he'll just shut down out of nowhere and he will just be he'll just all of a sudden just start crying and I just check on him and are you okay he's like I miss my daddy in heaven and then I'll hold him and then me and him will just sit there and and I'll just tell him I'm like I know your dad's proud of you I know he's smiling on you and you're in the here you're doing an amazing job and he loves you and he'll always love you and always be here in your heart and everything. So the, his grief more of the emotional side of it, like mine is. <laughs> and then my youngest, my youngest is kind of too young, so young, but he does know who his dad is. And I know when um, I will go to the cemetery to try to visit him one day, but I kind of went there too late. So he got upset because he wanted to see, go visit his daddy in heaven. And he was mad that the, that the, the auditorium part of it was closed because he's in the Coliseum oh. and um, he was so upset. So yeah, they all just grieve differently. And that's hard too, right? To kind of look at them. And I think sometimes we have an idea what quote unquote normal grieving is, or we expect everyone to cry or we expect people to be angry or whatever we've been taught about grief, but it is normal for everyone to react differently and to show their emotions differently. And I know sometimes as a mom that can weigh really heavily on you because your tendency is to take care of everyone else. And then whatever tiny fragment of time is left over is to take care of you and to process your own grief. How how did you try to manage that with making sure your kids were okay, but also making space for you and and what you needed to process? Now on that one, I'm going to be completely honest with you. And at first, when it first came down, like the first few months, I really did not take care of me. I I was focused on my children and making sure they're they're well and making sure they're okay, and that I neglected myself. And I wasn't that I was purposely trying to neglect myself. It's just I felt like nobody understood how I felt, and and it's like I tried to go to like a grief share, and I just. It just felt like none, nobody would understand the pain that I'm going through or anything like that. And then plus on top of it, like when I went to a church event for um, widows, that it was all older, uh, elderly women at that. And I felt like I didn't fit in because I'm so young and I just did not feel comfortable. I wish like if there would have been somebody around my age that I could have connected with, it would have been good. But that stopped me as well from going. So so I did neglect myself for 
for actually this whole period with I'm going to like the grief shares and everything like that. And it's like, I couldn't, I have no family to talk to about it. So literally I just, just learned through to just cry alone in my room. <laughs> That's what I do when my kids are in bed. That's when I cry it out. I cry and I tell God I miss him so much. And, and I just, I just wish I could have said goodbye to him before. And, and that's what I do. I be strong for your kids during the day and then just cry and cry at night. That's the, I, I do, I admit it, I do need to start, probably try to go to grief shares and stuff, but it's just hard because you feel like nobody will really understand. And I, I want to you'd be able to connect with somebody that would actually understand 100% of how I feel. But nobody will ever understand how we truly feel because we all go through things differently. So it's like, I like that. How do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And that's why I created Brave Widow in the online community there because... I wanted other young widows and people that were trying to juggle work and kids and all of those things together. And even mm -hmm. though obviously we have people part of that community that are older or younger, don't have kids, mm -hmm. there's still just this common theme of looking forward with hope and understanding that everyone's relationship is unique and different. But at the end of the day, like I get it when we expect family members to show up a certain way and they don't, or our social circle changes, or people say that things to us that they think's helpful and it's not like certain things that are just really easy to understand because we tend to experience similar things. And I would recommend too, I went through the grief recovery method and they have a, a handbook if you don't want to go through the the course, but the workshop and the course was phenomenal. And I was probably 18 months out or so when I went through it. And there was a lot of things that I felt like were left unsaid, like loops that hadn't been closed. Like, oh, I wish I could have told him this. I wish we could have resolved that. I wish we would have had this conversation. But going through that program really helped me walk away feeling a lot lighter and feeling like I had closed all those loops and said w what needed to be said. So if you get the opportunity, I highly recommend that when you're struggling with like either guilt or just feeling like, oh, I really just have this angst of what I wish I would have said. So that's amazing. I love that. I really do. You know, what's really awesome too is, you know what I did? Like, I know I didn't, wasn't going to like the great shows and stuff, but I know what I did that actually helped me to keep my mind busy is I, I got into like just coloring. I, I know that, that probably sounds like childlike, but I just got, I ordered a bunch of gel pens off of Amazon and I started printing out all kinds of pretty coloring pages and just started coloring and coloring, spending hours coloring because it's all like the fine detailed like crosses or butterflies or Bible scriptures, all kinds of different drawing pages. And I would just just color and color and it would help me to keep my mind off of the, the sadness and just into just enjoying just coloring. So I would say like I would tell anybody just find something that you like to do and do it like even if it's like going getting your nails done or getting a massage or doing t anything to do your you time me time just take that time to just do you time whatever it could be even if it's having like a having coffee and a donut and just relaxing and watching some netflix whatever it is just something that you enjoy to do can that helps and i love that because that really helped me throughout that whole whole year that's been high it really was an amazing thing to do I'm glad I did that <laughs> yeah I, I think that's perfect and what a lot of people I think don't realize is that to heal you have to process your emotion you have to take action so doing things like coloring even though you feel like oh it's coloring but actually any kind of creative actions works the same part of our brain as the part of our brain that processes emotions. So 
That's why you see a lot of craft therapy groups and art therapy groups and writing and journaling and all of those things really help because it's working that part of your brain that processes emotions and feelings. And so you are, you are doing the work, even if you didn't yeah. realize it at the time. So that's awesome. Yeah, no, thank God. I'm grateful. Uh, I, I am grateful because I, I didn't really think about that. I didn't, there are those therapeutic like classes and stuff like that. And I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell the audience a little about your book, what's in it, maybe what you hope that people get out of it and where they can find it if they want to buy it or they want to learn more about you where they should go. Um, so I wrote the book just starting from explaining how before from being a wife to a widow, I just um, go and I break down in the book that I, that I, it was just a regular normal day. And I didn't know that February 8, 2022 was going to turn it from me being a wife into a widow. That was uh, uh, the day that my title changed. So I explain in the book the what I went through and how I've gone through it and the ways that you can go about seeking help or things to encourage a fellow widows and also for those helping widows and encouraging or ways to, if you want to sign up and help one of those, one of us widows, you can do that. And you can find the book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And it's a really encouraging book. It's really, it's, I know that it might only be a few pages, but it is well worth it. And I know it's like, I think it's like 36 pages or so, but it's, it is very encouraging and I encourage anybody to pick a copy. And even if you you want to uh, have the electric version, they have that as well that you can order. So you don't have to order the copy of the book. You can have it on like your Kindle or anything like that as well. So that's cool, an option. But it's just basically I want to be able to have God use me um, as, you know, his purpose to for me to help other um, widows out there going through the same situation because I to me I feel like we all need to team up and help one another and we all should come together and be there for one another because there are people like as myself that didn't have nobody calling and checking if I was okay I I had a plan the fun my husband's funeral all by myself I didn't even have the family, his side of the family helping me or anything. And and that was hard. That was really, um, really, really hard uh, because I, I even um, designed the uh, funeral brochure um, all by myself. I did everything by myself because I was struggling financially. So I had to figure out what to do and make it happen because for me, I wanted my children and I to have a little ceremony that we can honor him and everything so i i spent hours like trying to get this brochure perfect and it ended up coming out beautifully i'm so like amazed how beautiful the the brochure came out and then i even did the like the videos that they play at the i i made that video too i got all the pictures and i made the slideshows and the songs through it and things that i didn't think i was capable of doing i did and it was just so amazing because I, I, this never happened. I would never knew I was capable of being creative in writing a book or creating a, a funeral pamphlet or even making a slideshow. Like I just was like, wow, like it's amazing. Like, like that I have that I know that I, I might be alone in this situation, but I'm not alone. Cause I have God and I, have skills like I have creativity like and I can help other people I don't need to like I could I could sit there and I can be like shun myself off but what good would that be to me that's like I found better to be able to help everybody my heart is to help and I love helping people and that's just always been the kind of person I am so I just whatever I can do to help I just want to be that person and I'll, and I'll, and if anybody wants my phone number, email, anything, I'll give my phone number, email to anybody that, that may feel like they're alone because I don't want nobody, nobody in the world to feel like they're alone when they're going through grief and losing their spouse. 
I'll be there for you. anybody, whoever needs, I'm lucky you with open arms. You know what I mean? As you're not, I'm here <laughs> anytime. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And I can feel the passion and the love and just that service mentality, just like pouring out of you. It's amazing. And I, I agree. It's so important for people to find their tribe, like their community, their group of people that are going to be there and support them. And even if it's virtually, even if it's like this, having someone who gets it, having someone who understands where you don't really have to explain a lot about what you're feeling and, and what you're going through. It's just a incredible feeling to have that type of support around you. Well, yeah. Jesse, exactly. thank you so, so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. And I will put all the links to your book in the show notes. So if people are driving or not able to write it down, then they can go back and find it later. But thanks again for coming. It was really a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And it was a pleasure being here. And I hope everybody has an amazing whatever day, night, whatever it is that they're watching this. And thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the Brave Widow podcast. I would love to help you take your next step, whether that's healing your heart, finding hope, or achieving your dreams for the future. Do you need a safe space to connect with other like-minded widows? Do you wish you had how-tos for getting through the next steps in your journey, organizing your life, or moving through grief? What about live calls where you get answers to your burning questions? The Brave Widow membership community is just what you need. Inside, you'll find courses to help guide you, a community of other widows to connect with, live coaching and Q&A calls, and small group coaching where you can work on what matters most to you. Learn how to heal your heart, find hope, reclaim joy, and dream again for the future. It is possible. Head on over to bravewidow.com to learn more.